Alright, what's happening y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and it's some important stuff to talk about today. I have some good news, and I have some bad news. Good news is, Antonio Gibson, as you can see by the title, is 100%. Well, at least he was a full go at practice today. So he's set to play Thursday. I'm going to talk about that a little bit after the intro. But the main thing I want to talk about today is Terry McLaurin's frustration with this quarterback musical chairs that we've been playing since he's been here. Since even before he got here, but most notably since he's been here. And that's why he's frustrated. So I'm going to dive into what he said and, of course, analyze the situation. Are we at risk of losing a Terry McLaurin once he's able to hit free agency because of the quarterback situation? A lot of people don't think about that. But before we dive into that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, also, make sure you check out the rest of the channel, all of my videos, the organized and playlist. I even have a comedy playlist for all of my funny videos. So much content coming out. It seems to be at least something to talk about every day. And I'm waiting on this All-22 film to come out so I can start breaking that down as well. So stay tuned for all of that. And without further ado, let's get it. All right, so first of all, Ryan Fitzpatrick with his hip, of course, did not participate in practice. And then he was also placed on the injured reserve. And Antonio Gibson with his shoulder injury was a full participant today, not limited. So it sounds like he's going to be a full go against the Giants as if the injury never happened. And that's big news because I was definitely worried about his shoulder. He looked hurt against the Chargers. And then, of course, because of that fumble when he was heading out to the tunnel, Cole Holcomb and John Bostic were trying to cheer him up because he was definitely down emotionally and mentally. But it's good to know that he's at least up physically. And I'm pretty sure he's going to have a nice bounce back game against the Giants. And also with the other move, with Ryan Fitzpatrick being placed on the injured reserve list, we signed linebacker Jared Norris from the practice squad to the 53-man roster. So that's who's taking the spot of a Ryan Fitzpatrick. Because remember, we signed quarterback Kyle Shermer to the practice squad so he's our third quarterback as of right now Kyle Allen and Taylor Heineke are our only two quarterbacks on the 53 man roster and then speaking of quarterbacks of course after Ryan Fitzpatrick got killed the way he did because of Charles Leno failing his blocking assignment of course they had to ask Charles Leno about it in a press conference today and of course, he took full responsibility of it. He said he feels terrible about what happened. He expounded upon how his whole job is literally to protect the quarterback and he didn't do it. And he also said that he went and talked to Ryan Fitzpatrick earlier and apologized and all of that type of stuff. Stuff he should have done, but we definitely need way better from you. And then of course, speaking of quarterbacks with Ryan Fitzpatrick gone for at least six to eight weeks, Taylor Heineke is now the focus for this team. And he also had his own press conference today. And he said that he only cares about the opinions of the people inside the team facility. We had plenty of opportunities to go bring in other quarterbacks. I mean, we knew Ryan Fitzpatrick was 38 years old and has a fairly rich injury history. So that definitely did show this organization's faith and Taylor Heineke by us not making a major move to go get a quarterback, especially in the draft. Because again, Ryan Fitzpatrick's 38. I don't think anybody expected him to play this entire season fully healthy because he hasn't even been able to do that consistently even while he was young. So why would he be able to do that now that he's 38 years old? I'm 36! Behind an O-line that's very talented, but they're still trying to work some things out. They got to get their chemistry together. And we have a lot of new pieces in there. But Heineke said that he feels like the organization has a lot of confidence in them and that's why he doesn't care about the outside noise even though a lot of outside noise even my friends y'all already know me man i'm from atlanta and all of my friends are from atlanta and like different teams for various reasons falcons fans rams steelers colts cowboys 49ers bears and a lot of them like taylor heineke as well and have been asking me why did we even start him so i'm not exactly sure what outside noise taylor heineke is trying to ignore Maybe it's just my friend group. I don't know. I feel like it's a nice, diverse group of people as far as fan bases go. And all of them seem to like Taylor Heineke. But all of that doesn't matter. What does matter is Ron Rivera doing whatever he can to get Taylor Heineke ready for this Thursday game. 
and that's not just X's and O's. Ron Rivera asked Taylor Heineke to break the huddle in practice today. Like when the entire team is together and you deliver like the motivational speeches and stuff like that, he asked Taylor Heineke to handle that responsibility today. And in his press conference, Taylor Heineke even said, quote, being the new starting guy, I felt like I needed to get in front of the team more. And he also said, I said some words I probably shouldn't say right now about the Giants, unquote. So he was out there hyping them up. And reportedly, we had several guys talk during the huddle, but they liked how guys responded to Taylor Heineke's energy coming out of the huddle. So he seems very inspiring. I mean, even just his play on the field, guys just seem to play more inspired football. We just seem like a more passionate team, a team that believed they could truly win after Taylor Heineke came into the game. But even now in practice during huddles and when it's time to deliver a motivational speech, Taylor Heineke has that as well. But now the bad news. Terry McLaurin in his press conference today admitted that it's frustrating at times to have no consistency with the same quarterback. He's had 10 different quarterbacks since he's gotten here. And then of course, he said he makes no excuses and he doesn't want anybody to feel sorry for him because regardless of what's going on it's his job to go out there and make plays for whoever's throwing the ball towards him and it's true but he has every right to be frustrated man he cannot throw the ball to himself if anybody understands his frustration is me i've been preaching do whatever you got to do to get a franchise quarterback at least take a swing and i hate that people bring up rg3 and dwayne haskins because i as much as i tried to have faith in dwayne haskins after we got him because it was like he's here and you you see some traits let's believe in him i mean at least give him an honest shot I didn't like Dwayne Haskins coming out of the draft. I didn't want him. I wanted Brian Burns. I felt like we might as well wait till the following year to address quarterback. I didn't think that was a good quarterback draft outside of Kyler Murray. And then RG3 even coming out of Baylor. All of the hype surrounding us the entire offseason like, oh yeah, they have the number two pick. They're going to get RG3. I loved RG3. I loved his talent, but I knew he was injury prone coming out of Baylor. And I knew he wasn't a great pocket passer, so eventually he would have to adapt to how the lead catches up to his legs and game plan towards stopping that specifically. So I didn't necessarily see any long-term success in RG3. I hoped we would, but I still feel like we haven't taken an honest shot at a franchise quarterback, at least at one that I would like to take. We haven't gone to get the quarterback that Rico wants yet. We've taken quarterbacks, but we haven't done what I've wanted. And I definitely feel like we need to go and get one of these guys, just period, so that we can be true Super Bowl contenders. Like I keep telling y'all, the league is literally designed for the offense to win. Great offense is gonna always be great defense. The rules are literally set to be that way. Tom Brady even admitted that the offense can make mistakes and the defense gets punished for it. And I've been saying this for years. And even just beyond that, the offense creates points. Points equal views, views equal money. So the NFL wants the offenses to win. Of course, they don't want it to be lump sided 80 something to 70 something point scores because nobody's gonna take it seriously. But the league is literally designed for great quarterbacks to go far and quarterbacks can make up for a lot of the holes you have again if you take away quarterback especially on paper we are more talented than the chargers just top to bottom but justin herbert at the end of the day went out there and just made more plays taylor heineke didn't play poorly he played really well and it's definitely not his fault that we lost but justin herbert is just on a different level i mean justin herbert pretty much single-handedly won the time of possession battle they didn't run the ball very well. Justin Herbert was just out here making 30 15s look like third and ones. It just looked too easy for him. Again, Taylor Heineke's really good. Justin Herbert is just on a different level. We need one of those guys just on a different level. I mean, you saw what Kyler Murray did to the Tennessee Titans. You just need one of those guys to make it far to matter. You know how hard it is to perfectly construct a roster with the other 21 starting guys and then depth as well. Quarterbacks cover up a lot of the mistakes and holes you have on your team. Again, look at the Chargers nobody's talking about them being one of the most talented teams in the nfl without justin herbert on there nobody was even talking about their defense being one of the best defenses in the nfl at least to the level of ours granted the chargers do have a really good defense but nobody was giving them the hype that our defense has been getting all across the nfl since before this season started and going back to terry mclaurin is crazy because he's already caught passes from seven different quarterbacks since he's been in the league just starting out his third nfl season case keenum colt mccoy Dwayne haskins alex smith kyle allen taylor heineke and even tight end logan thomas technically he never actually caught a pass from ryan fitzpatrick in a regular season game yet so he doesn't even count and if you think about it most if not all of the elite receivers have a really good quarterback to throw to him and it makes them their jobs easier stefan diggs has josh allen 
Tyreek Hill has Pat Mahomes, so does Travis Kelsey. D Hop and all of those guys have Kyler Murray. Devontae Adams has Aaron Rodgers. DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett have Russell Wilson, who throws arguably the best deep ball in the entire NFL. CD Lamb, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup have Dak Prescott. Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Antonio Brown have Tom Brady. Keenan Allen, who we just saw, Mike have Justin Herbert. I swear Mike isn't that good. I like Mike a lot. He's a good receiver. But like Justin Herbert, with the way he was throwing it into places where only Mike could get it, a lot of the times there was good coverage, even from Benjamin St. Juice. He was there. It was just perfect dots and a great play made by the receivers. AJ Brown and now Julio Jones have Ryan Tannehill. Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts have Matt Ryan. And it goes on and on and on beyond that. You even saw Derek Carr last night making some great throws. So I'm definitely worried about the possibility of McLaurin when it's time for free agency. When he hits the end of his contract, he's like, man, I don't know, man. Y'all still don't have a quarterback. Remember, he's an older guy than you would think. He's already 25 years old, even though he's only in his third NFL season. And remember, his contract ends after the 2022 season. So we have this year and next year at the very least to give him a reason to want to stay here. I mean, he definitely seems like the type of guy that would prefer to stay with the place that he's drafted. But if we continue playing quarterback musical chairs, especially since I'm not confident in Taylor Heineke's health, it's not even necessarily his play, even though, again, there's a difference between a Taylor Heineke and a Justin Herbert and a lot of these other elite quarterbacks in the NFL. And that difference shows, again, Taylor Heineke played well, but he wasn't Justin Herbert. And like I've said before, I feel like Scott Turner should have opened the offense up more for Taylor Heineke to at least give him the opportunities to be a Justin Herbert. But Taylor Heineke's limited. He's short. His arm isn't as strong. Some of those throws Justin Herbert made on Sunday, Taylor Heineke literally just can't make. Again, I like Taylor Heineke a lot, but along with this play on the field, but especially his injury more importantly his injury history i'm not confident in him being a long-term solution here as well not even just this season but beyond this season so terry mclaurin has to be frustrated he has to be seeing guys i mean he's getting left off a top 100 list because of his quarterbacks you can't convince me dk metcalf cole beasley aj brown all of these guys are first of all even just better than terry mclaurin but that much better to where they're placed so high on the top 100 and terry mclaurin doesn't even make it it's quarterback and even though terry mclaurin is a very humble guy that has to be annoying i know i would be annoyed and if the opportunity presents itself when my contract is up if this team has really like made no honest strides it'd be different if we drafted say like a malik willis in the draft we traded up to get him whatever and he doesn't work out at least you tried but this organization hasn't honestly tried yet we just brought in a 38 year old ryan fitzpatrick taylor heineke is an inspiring story but again he's limited and injury prone if i'm terry mclaurin man i'm sorry i may be out as well i'm not gonna lie i think this organization is definitely like a couple of years away from being a super bowl contender but a lot of that is on the shoulder of the quarterback position and who knows if terry mclaurin is convinced of that i am as a fan and an analyst but who knows what terry mclaurin is thinking because what scares me is how humble terry mclaurin is and how he never really speaks exactly what he's feeling he just says all of the right things now granted the question was worded to him in a way where they asked if it was a little frustrating and he said yeah it's been frustrating it's not like he just came out of nowhere and was like man it's this sucks they asked if it was frustrating he basically said yes it is but still he is the type of guy that just never talks about stuff like this he is the type of guy that doesn't give reporters media guys content creators like me even a little bit of something to talk about he's just the type of guy that gives you no drama not even the slightest little thing to blow up but he did that today because a little bit of honesty bled out from his heart today and i'm pretty sure even though he only spoke about it for a little bit i'm pretty sure this is a frustrating thing he deals with day and night on a daily basis so again when 2023 comes around and we haven't at least attempted to make a big move at quarterback, do not be surprised if Terry McLaurin's gone. Again, I think Terry McLaurin is the type of guy to maybe be like a Daryl Green, drafted here, stay here for his entire career. But who knows, man? Again, you'd be surprised just off of the fact, again, that he is 25 years old. Even though he was only drafted three years ago, he's 25. He's an older receiver compared to the rest of the guys in his draft class. And he's older than receivers that were drafted a year or two before him. And that matters. I mean, even Logan Thomas, he looks like a franchise tight end, but he's 30. I'm 36! 
But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Just wanted to give y'all something to think about. Like I've been saying, bro, my whole argument about a franchise quarterback for the past two years with people debating against me and saying we don't need one and people acting like it's the 1980s. You can just win with a really good running game and a really good defense. Even just beyond us being Super Bowl contenders and being able to matter and being consistent because you can be more consistent in this league with an elite QB than an elite defense period but even just beyond that man what about Terry McLaurin like what, what, what how does he feel about this man I'm telling you don't be surprised come 2023 and we're still struggling at quarterback Terry McLaurin's like yeah I'm just going ahead and head over to this team their quarterback situation is great. I'm going to take my career off. I can go over here, show what I can do, and get paid the money I deserve and all of that type of stuff. Because it may not even just be legacy. Even though that top 100 thing, making the Pro Bowl, all of that stuff, that legacy stuff is really important Hall of Fame. But also money-wise, this quarterback situation we have is costing Terry McLaurin money right now. I mean, there's so many ways to look at this where not having a franchise quarterback or at least attempting to go get one, taking an honest swing at it is really hurting this franchise and really hurting Terry McLaurin. He deserves better. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please like this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. Of course, man, please subscribe if you haven't and definitely check out the rest of the content on the channel. And as always, man, I appreciate all of the support, man, big time. Shouts out to everybody that donates to the channel, especially y'all that pull up and donate in the live streams i really appreciate y'all also a big shout out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors you name you see scrolling on the screen right now i really appreciate y'all i'll catch y'all later i'm out